And we are back. Appreciate y'all for being here. Love y'all to pieces. Uh, we're continuing to break down the Cleveland Browns, the Cowboys. They got a game on Sunday. Uh, and, hey, we'll see when we'll be doing pre- and post-game shows and all that kind of stuff. We'll direct y'all to it when we figure it out. But uh, right now, we're going to be breaking down the game. Uh, Vice Lombardi, of course. Brian Broaddus, I'm, I'm sure you're doing okay, sir. You look fantastic. You look healthy. Doing, yeah, I'm doing okay, and I know you're doing okay as well. Yeah, we good. How about uh, happy uh, – Happy NFL football night, right? We got a, a, re- a weather delay is what we're dealing with right now on a Thursday night football. Man, that's perfect if that's the case. So that means me and you can actually give the people a good show and hopefully the the weather will be fixed by the time we get done. Yeah, I think, I, think they're, I think this thing's kicking off at 8.45 Eastern. So 7.45 our time, we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll be good we'll to go. Some, we'll do some good work. Yeah. Man, Brian, boy, you was watching film on the yeah. on the Cleveland Browns, and I just I warned my people, man, because I did a show today. I did a show on Bleach Report. I did a show <laughs> on. Hey, look, we working, man. We're and working. I warned my audience on all those different shows today. I said, "Hey, man, as loud and boisterous as I am about beating the hell out of the Browns' offense, yeah. I think the Browns' defense is a is a totally different fight." Um, and I, yeah. I I do think that this game may come down to what offense can establish a certain amount of points first you know yeah. uh you know you can't make mistakes you can't give up big plays and uh who gets to the end zone first is probably going to be how this game is going to go and and honestly brian you know that's more than just putting points on the board like if the cowboys and mike mccarthy's done this before he you know he'll normally you know let the defense go out there first and just get the ball at the half but i remember last year we were against the jets or something like that and i saw value in okay well the cowboys get the ball first let's put pressure on zach wilson to go down there and score and i think that'll be something similar in the mindset of some of these guys coaching you know mike mccarthy is to say hey man look i don't have a whole bunch of faith in deshaun watson let's see this may come down to who can win the slow-footed foot race first and uh put points on the board and make watson catch up brian what do you think about this browns defense and and you know doing yeah I, i i like where you're going here you have i think you have the better offensive line mm-hmm you have the better quarterback, for sure. Wide receivers, kind of looks like a little bit of a wash there. But where it really is different is, I feel like Cleveland's got the better defense. For sure. And and if you go player for player, there's some things that cancel each other out. I think Cleveland overall has a better pass rush than you do right now. Um, I think that their linebackers with Cora Mora, in that group, the thing with Cora Mora is that you've got to get a hat on him. And here I am. I'm not even talking about Miles Garrett yet, but I'll get yeah. to that one. Yeah, yeah. Cora Mora, if Dallas is going to want to try and run the football and try and be successful, run the football. And if they they go through the Vach Lombardi plan of starting Rico Dowdle and getting serious about this. Mm-hmm. I had Derek Eagleton on the break today he said, listen, I you can start Zeke and be ceremonial guy and all that. And we can all, you know, spell script Ohio there in Cleveland and, you know, he can dot the I, whatever you want to do. Yeah. But if you want to be serious about running the football, you need to start Rico Dowdle in this game. Yeah. And it has to be in a way of, it's got to be, okay, I should say this. Maybe you don't start him, but I will say this. Get to the, when we look at the stat sheet, when you and I are doing our show together Monday, we need to be talking about, they handed the ball to Rico Dowdle 18 times in this game. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it doesn't need to be, well, Zeke had 13 and Rico had six, and, you know, that's how they played football. Mm-hmm. That doesn't need to be the case. But the thing that if you're going to run the football, you're going to have to be able to handle their linebacker. And I mentioned Cora Mora because when he, when he plays defensive snaps and he's playing – the run defensive snaps, that portion of it, this guy's a tackling machine. Yeah. I mean, he is a tackling machine. And if you do not get if you do not get a body on him, he will find a way to make the tackle. That that's that's just a fact. You've got to second level block him and make sure that you at least get a hat because if you don't, your running game probably is not going to go very far. So that linebacker, 
I think there's something you have to keep an eye on for sure. If, in fact, like I say, you know, this guy had 53 run tackles, 53 tackles in 291 plays mm-hmm. that he faced. Yeah. So that that tells you a little bit about his ability to to get to the football and, and make plays. I All remember right. Cora Moore coming out of the draft, though, Brian. You know, yeah. he was a guy that Notre Dame would just Notre line up all over the place, right? Like, yeah. oh, sometimes he'll be at nickel, yeah. sometimes he'll be in the box safety, and he'll just be all the linebackers, right? Mm-hmm. He was a guy that if he could just be healthy, he's a dude that gets that gets to the football and he can cover. You know what I mean? So Cora yeah. Moore was a guy that, you know, I think the Cowboys got Micah that year, I believe, or something like that. It was uh, it was him, it was Micah, and it was the guy from a. Uh, Kansas City, our guy, uh, Missouri. Bolton. Nick Bolton, right? And I was like, man, this is this is a fantastic set of linebackers. I would love to have all of them. So just seeing yeah. Cora Moore and just watching him and getting ready for him, like, you know, to your point, this whole run game situation or whatever, he will go right. put a hat on the football. But I would love it if it is, if it is Dowdle because if it's like yeah. a physical – game i think they have the advantage i think we should look for as many big plays as right. as as possible and right. if, and if we got a guy with juice i'm not going to say the little guy's name but i i think that Rico is the more realistic situation here. Out of those realistic backs, out of Deuce, out of uh, Rico or Zeke, Rico does have the more juice. And um, honestly, Brian, I think when it comes down to going against this defense, I want to be as unpredictable as 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 possible. And if Zeke is out there, I have a good feeling about what's going to happen if Zeke is out there. And Zeke could get right. tough yards. He could be a good pass blocker for you and all this kind of stuff. But if Rico's on there, I can go, okay, Rico could run, but we could run screens with him. We can get him out in, out in the open and do all kind of other different things. And he can break one if if that's in the cards or whatever. So uh, yeah. to your point, uh, I do think that a big play is more likely to happen with Rico and Cora Moore is going to put helmets on, on Zeke if it's yeah. a physical versus physical game. Yeah. I, 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 I like the direction you're taking this thing. And, and to me, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you're, as you watch, you're like, okay, here's some possibilities, you know, here's some, some options. And, you know, they're, they're a good front. They're, they're a good defensive front. You know I mean? You, you, you look at, like I say, you go through, you know, with Miles Garrett and and then you know with with uh, with Smith, mm-hmm. you know and Okawamru, you know you, that's, I mean they've got some guys that can Tomlinson. They've got some legitimate players. Their 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 backups are a little banged up right now. They might not have the depth in this first game that they're probably going to get into, but it's a. I think you want to try and stay away from being out of balance in this game. I, I really do. I, I you know, I, their, their pass rush, um, last night when I was breaking them down after you and I did our show together, I watched and uh, I watched all their sacks, mm-hmm. the, the 49 that they had yeah. during the year. Cause I was curious of where miles Garrett lined up. And I, I was curious of the 14 that he had, man, he, he, he causes problems, you know, 14 sacks for the sacks resulted in, fumbles yeah you know one of them re- resulted in a touchdown i mean he 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 just you know against the colts you know they gardner Minshew drops back and he just you know blasts him and also the ball's in the air and it's in the end zone and it's a touchdown so you know you got to be very mindful of of that but i just was curious where all he lines up during these sacks and you're primarily going to see him on the right end which would be your the Cowboys left in uh, of those sacks, twenty five of those were on the right side of the defense. Ten of those sacks, he was on the left side of the of the defense as the end as the edge, and then three snaps he was over the center. And I thought he might have played over the center far more in some of this stuff than than you know, but. Here we go, right here. You look example. This is opening day against Cincinnati, and, and this is the things that I worry about a little bit. Look, look what they've done here. They've covered, they've covered. If we could go back, I know you will. They've covered all the all they've they've covered all these guys, and now it turns into, you know, they put the center one on one right there, you know, and and that's where I I think that that's going to be a, a little bit of a problem when you look at. 
you know, do they find, how do they find these matchups? How do they find the various matchups? You know, uh, I, I, I believe that everybody, you know, it's like, oh, the matchup with Guyton, the matchup with Guyton. And, but what do you expect? Guyton is going to, you know, they're going to slide his way. They're going to help him. They're going to do everything they can, you know, to try and make sure that his first game is, is you know a, a, a sound one where he's just not stressed. I mean, he's going to get stressed in this game, but the the number of you know the number of ways to uh, to handle him, and and this is the problem. Like I say, you're going to get him at various spots: the right end, the left end. You're going to get him over the center. They had 11 sacks last year where they didn't even, where he wasn't even on the field. Yeah, so this one this of them t- right here. This one in the last play, like like Gary's yeah. not even out there. Yeah. Yeah, this tells you a lot about, you know, tells you a lot about, I mean, I watched the Arizona game, you know, that, that just, that was a nightmare for them. You know, they just, they, they didn't have a really great answer. And, you know, it just, it, that's your fear when you're playing against Miles Garrett because his ability to move around. I mean, he's going to rush you a lot of different ways. Um, he is going to, I'm telling you, Vosh, I, there's, with his, his, we talk about quickness and explosiveness and all that. Mm. I I can't remember in all my years in the league of an edge that gets as much distance. Yeah. The ground he covers with his first step. And it's not even explosive. It's it is, but his, you know, if you look at metrics and all that, mm. his quick sack rate is huge. Yeah. You know, but here we are. You know, you're he he puts so much pressure, and right here you can see. Look, I mean, that 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 guy. That's a pretty good set right there. That's a that's a good set by that tackle right there. He's going to kick wide, and he's getting out as fast and far as he can. But watch the. I mean, Garrett is like there. I mean, if he's even, he's by you, and so there. You know, now the the blocker has to turn and try and push him by, but then all of a sudden now here comes the dip, and here comes the you know, the length. And mm-hmm. I mentioned those four, you know, those four fumbles where like you, you've got a body on him and he's swatting at the ball and the ball gets knocked out. You know, he's just got that kind of ability. So Brian, let me ask you this about this pass rush, right? Because the yeah. one thing that we can always say and lean on, like the very first, the very first thing that we say here, like, okay, well we have to deal with miles Garrett by that, get rid uh-huh. of the ball quickly. Right. Yeah. Do, do, do you think, let me just pause this and just talk. For, do you think, that limits your offense too much by turning yeah. into a Dinkin and Duncan team. Do you think that is worth yeah. the risk of holding the ball a little bit longer just to see if you can get a big play? Cause, because like I said you, earlier, I really feel like if you can get a big play against the Browns, a, a 20, 30, 40 yard, you know, you know, game, whether it be pass or, 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 or run, it's going to pay off for you more at the end. Do you think that is worth it to hold the ball a little longer, knowing that a sack may be coming, but at least, we have an advantage down the field somewhere. You're playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the league when it comes to playing against pressure. Yeah. Dak Prescott statistically is in the numbers. You know, yeah. Statistically, it, it's not stuff that we're making up to try and, oh, well, you know, love Dak because no, he went, you know, game in, game out. When you apply pressure to him, he thrives in the pressure. And um, yeah, I, the thing that the Browns are going to do, Early in the snap, early in the in the snaps, early in the in the the, the down and distance, they're going to play man coverage, mm-hmm. first and second down. They're going to play a lot of man coverage. When they get later in the downs, they're going to play more zone coverage. So what you have to be able to do is find a way to when they do play that man coverage and they play it well. I mean, the, the, you know, when you when you look at when you look at these, you know, when Emerson and Ward and Newsom, yeah, you know, they're a good group. They they don't give up a lot of big plays. Uh, they generally stay in position. But if you tell me early downs, you're going to see a lot of man coverage. That you know, you need to find a way to win. But especially when they get to zone, when they start playing zone. That's that's where you kind of need to take advantage of them. Well, th- th- this team is really last year was really good in the red zone. Oh, excuse me, really good on third down. Mm-hmm. 
They did a great job of getting you off the field on third down, but they were terrible in the red zone, yeah. which is which was a weird combination to be so good on third down. And I watched all their touchdowns that they gave up, and the red zone problems were really. I mean, if you're watching them, you're like, my gosh, these teams are driving the ball into the red zones, or they get down the red zone, and the Browns forget how to cover. Yeah, they forget how to tackle. They 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 had plays where guys were out of position, and it happened. It happened the whole year. It wasn't just one isolated game. There were several games where they were really really bad in the red zone. But on third down in the field, they're going to get you off. The, they're going to get you off the field by the way they play because of the way. I think you could take advantage. I think you could take advantage of these safeties. I think that when when I was when I was thinking, you know, with with I mentioned Emerson and Ward and and Newsom, yeah, I those those are good corners. They're 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 guys that you know you you can win against, but you're not going to win all the time. I, I just kind of look at with with Delpit and Thornhill now, this is how they played against the 49ers. And, Bots, you tell me if this is a sound strategy to play the Cowboys, mm-hmm. something we might see. The Cowboys like the, the in those in cuts, yeah. those, those in routes, those in breaking routes. We've seen a lot of times. Mm-hmm. I know when I was at Oxnard against the Rams, there were a couple of times where Cooks got inside between the two safeties, shot there, shot there, you know. Dak step up, throw the ball. Dak step up, throw the ball. We've seen the ball go up, up the seam with, uh, we've seen the ball go up the seam with Ferguson yeah. or any tight end. And speaking of that, by the way, I don't think you're going to have Stevens available this uh, weekend for the game. John Stevens, so yeah. yeah, so yeah, I thought Steven, Stevens. What I'm hearing, I just want to get that in while I'm thinking about it. I don't think he's going to play, yeah. so that hurts you a little bit right there. But anyway, the the way the the way that the Browns defended and the 49ers when we watch the 49ers it's all that drag it's drag it's two level it's second it's an intermediate cut they played what we call a robber Mm -hmm. and with the two deep look and then it snapped the ball they they took a safety and put him in the middle of the field and put another safety behind him so they were sitting just right behind each other Mm -hmm. so what happened was when brock purdy went back to pass he saw a safety sitting in the middle of the field and then another safety sitting behind. So they were trying to take away all those crossing routes in the intermediate side of the field. Yeah. I think if, if all of a sudden, if Swartz decides he's going to try and take away some of Dallas's inside game, now you're going to have to win on the outside and you're going to have to win to the sidelines. You're going to have to win you know, outside those numbers. Uh, and you know that could be a little bit different, but I... I think it's a way to kind of combat what Dallas likes to do in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. You know, they like to get those 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 routes that go to the middle. It's an it's a it's a it's an easy throw, not an easy throw, but it's a throw that Dak Prescott's comfortable with. You know, you know all the all the throws around the middle. That's mostly like Lamb and Ferguson, right? Right. But right. if there's anything outside, that's always been Tolbert and Cooks. You know, right. you know Cooks has been the the nine ball guy or yeah. the the corner route, the right. back of the end zone corner route guy. So you know, I do think the Cowboys have some options there. Like if if, if they do decide to you know you know take away the middle of the field, I think the Cowboys right. can go towards the outside. But but right. but but Brian, do you think that this comes back to the run game? Right? Do you think that yeah. if they do try to you know give you some weird looks, muddy up the looks, and just yeah. uh you know move move the backfield around, you know you know safeties around. Do you think that this is an opportunity to where hey, let's run the football, bring the safeties towards us, towards the offense, and now mm-hmm. we can navigate over the middle, but behind them, or, right. you know, navigate, you know, our corners or whatever, Brian, bro. So, so, so listen, yeah. man, Brian, let me just, you, you know, at the, in the middle of the season, we just abandoned the run game. We're like, damn it. Yeah. That's just damn the run game. Do you yeah. see us going damn the run game this, this year? Because I do think that this is a game the Cleveland Browns are a tough defense up front, but I do think you can run the football against them. You're able to, if you can work them sideways, you can find mm-hmm. a way to run the football against them, Brian. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that the Cowboys even try this, or do you think we just go immediately to Dak Savers? I think they initially start the game with trying to 
try to run the football. And and you mentioned the move. I think if they do find a way to you know keep or stay ahead of the chains, keep the Browns honest with that, then it turns into now your waggles and your boots and things like that. I could see I could see them trying to make the Browns defend the whole field. Waggle left, waggle right, you know, a screen here, a run here. Uh, you know, I can see them doing, you know, various things. This is the Ravens right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the problem. This is the problem. This is not something you can watch their season of red zone football. Yeah. And you see this a lot. Look, it's just a straight, that's a straight just power run if you can run it back there. I mean, that's just hats on hat. There's nothing. I mean, it's okay. The influence you got, the influence you got, uh, you got to see the two pulls. I think I'm looking at that right. Mm-hmm. You got two pulls, and then it's just really quarterback power. Look at the, the, you know, you got you got the back goes away. You got you got so you got two things going away. You got a back taking a taking a, a defender out of the play. You got a, a fake jet sweep mm-hmm. that's taking that safety out of the play or the linebacker. Watch it affect the linebacker in this when we run it forward. And oh, now man. you got the look at all those guys, the linebackers and yeah, the safeties kind of move yeah, over that way. Yeah, yeah. this is going to, you know, Dallas has got that ability. Dallas has got that ability to to do some of these, you know, deceptive type of runs. Will they do it? We'll see. But I I think that 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 you just can't go into this game and completely abandon the run. You, I, you just can't. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, it, it's going to be tough. You're going to be, you know, it's – but yeah, this is they they really didn't look they didn't have an answer at all for what was going on with the Ravens and some other some other teams who are having some success, you know, as well. Look at all these guys, you know, look at that. They're all everybody's slanting down inside. And what's it do? Boom, it opens up everything to the outside. Yeah. And they're all they're all looking around. I'll tell you another thing I think I would do in this game, Botch. Mm-hmm. I think I would go some quick count. So sure. I think I would just go first sound. I, I you know, you get a lot of you get a lot of standing around these these that's a great catch by the tight end. Yeah, it's tough. The, 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 these, these, see, there's a lot of standing around. See the standing around going on? Everybody's kind of standing around. Just go quick count. You know, you get Miles My, Garrett standing around, Smith standing around. They're all kind of standing around there. Dude, just go quick count. Yeah. You know, if they're thinking about getting down, putting the hand down, just go ahead and go. And I, I, you know, I could say it. I, the longer you have to hang in there, the harder it is going to be for your lineman to block. But, yeah, look at all these these red zone plays you're showing me right now. Yeah, that's what I look for. Yeah, yeah, red zone. Yeah, red, these, like they're, they're pretty bad. Now yeah. you got you know you got a quarterback. Look at that. I mean, you got a quarterback that's mobile. Sure. You you play with a mobile quarterback. Yeah. You know, Lamar Jackson, mobile right there. Step up, slide through, boop, throw the ball, boop, good catch, miss tackle. You see this a lot. Mm-hmm. You see this a lot with them, in, and especially in the red zone. I'm looking forward to here. Yeah, here we go. The end zone copy. Let's see they, how they handle Garrett. They're going to keep him. He okay. He kind of just they push him by. Quarterback steps up, flip the ball right out. There you go. Boom. Big play. Missed tackle. That happens a lot. They, it's funny. They get down the red zone and they fall apart yeah. <laughs> sometimes with their with their techniques. Man, Brian, I tell you what, man. Here's another one here. Uh, a 13-yard red zone play. It yeah. was j- yeah. just another one. 49ers. Yeah. yeah. Pass right here. Just It's cool. a shovel. Yeah. It's just a straight shovel. And look at the tackling. Look how poor the tackling was there. Yeah, let's get to the end zone. End zone copy. Yeah, this is just a straight shovel to McCaffrey, I believe. And yeah, it, it just it it. But the tackling was just so so bad in this area. Okay, they get ready. Oh, here we go. Yep, make a guy miss. That was Cora Moore too. I think he made miss. Yeah, Brian, yeah, would you like bragging on him, <laughs> Brian? You know, um, would you would you liken the Browns' defense to maybe or and and I guess this a this a good example all around because last year the offense wasn't that good, but like the Jets last year, right? We yeah. have this quarterback that ain't good, but they got talent at running back, they got talent at wide receiver, but the defense is incredible. Do you see this this game versus the Browns being being just like that, really? Yeah, I think you could put I think you could put the Browns in some hurt if all of a sudden then you're getting their offense to go three and outs. You know, if you're, you know, you know, they like I mentioned, they've they've had some issues with their depth along their defensive line. Mm. That's just a straight look at that. That's just, you know, that's 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 just a straight run right there. You know, look at everybody's blocked the inside gap. Boom, they got the center take, they got everybody taken care of, and now they just break a tackle. 
Mm-hmm. And and we're in the end zone. But yeah, to your point, yeah, you you if if their offense struggles to move the ball, maintain the ball, sustain drives, you, know, you can wear them down because of the depth of the or the lack of. The, you know, we'll see who all plays in this game mm-hmm. for them. They've got this team's built. This team's built to get after you as a passer. But if you could, you know, you could, there's things that you can find success. Like I said, I think you keep them moving. Uh, you kind of, the misdirection stuff, the easy throws, maybe take a shot or two down the field. These, these corners are good. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that the weakness of their, the weakness of it would probably be the safety play. And we'll see if Ferguson and others can take advantage of maybe some coverage stuff that they can maybe get away with, with Delpit and, and, uh, and others. I was going to ask you too, Brian. I was just, I was just looking at a lot of film backstage. I, so you learned that last week, right? It's just yeah. sometimes I'm just over here watching yeah. film. You know, motion does kind of get these guys moving all over the place, right? They now, do. It you know, does. The it uh, does. the uh, Colts game. I got to pull it up right here. Uh-huh. It's like they'll just, hey, look, we'll just go with it. Like wherever y'all go, we're just going to motion yeah. with it. And now you got Gardner Minshew running all over the place. And you yeah. know, Dak is a guy that runs better than Gardner Minshew here. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, 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 yeah, it's this a lot is of stuff. Yeah, it's you put, you know, look, you know, look. Like I say, you got, you got the movement right there, and then they're able just to kind of, they just block down. They get, the, they get the end to chase, and now they don't have, you know, the end was out of position there. End, you know, was was that ninety one? I could see that. Is it? Oh no, it's Smith. Smith, oh, it's Smith. Smith. Yeah, yeah, Smith just crashes, and then they, they try and fill with, they try and fill with the safety over the top right there. What's the safety? The safety bites on the. The, the safety thinks the ball's gone already on the inside handoff. Yeah. So what does he do? He chases steps, and that's Gardner Mitchell just runs up the field. They get a block. Sure. And Thornhill misses Thor- that that number one. He'll he'll miss his share of tackles now. Yeah. You know, he'll miss his share. You get him down and and and, and this, but it, it it was it was man, it was clear. It wasn't just oh we're gonna run a, have a bunch of touchdowns running off the one yard line. There you go again, and, bro. And, there you go again, yeah, missing it, them tackles. Yeah. Thornhill. Yeah. yeah. You know you know Brian. You know we're 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 talking about this defense and we're saying great things about them. And, but, but I don't think that they're this boogeyman of a defense. They are really good, but I think that you have an offense that can, that can deal with what they give you. And, and, and honestly, I guess that's what the, the big, the big test is, you know, you know, everybody mm-hmm. says, well, what do we do versus the good teams and the good defenses or whatever, you know, Hey, they got a high power defense. We got a high powered offense. And I mean, I mean, look at this one, Brian, this is it's just, no, it's a straight ass run right there. I mean, literally that, this is something that the Browns have it, it, it doesn't honestly it doesn't get any better. I, I sat there and, and queued up my film study and said, you know, give me all the red zone touchdowns. Yeah. And and it 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 goes on and on and on. So yeah, you get down there, and I know this year is different from last year, but a lot of same personnel. Yeah. A lot of the same personnel on this defense. And so, you know, Dallas has got it. Yeah. The thing is. Dallas can't have empty trips, sure. you know, empty trips and I, and I, yeah, kicking field goals. All that. This is a team. If you get up now, they had a, they, they rallied, they rallied against the Ravens. They got down really big to the Ravens and rallied and, 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 you know, won at the end, but they're not a team to me until, until Deshaun Watson proves to me, yeah. he's that guy once again. And there was a time where he was that guy. Sure. You know, there was a time he was throwing the ball well, but you you find a way to every drive. Find a way. Find a way. You know, you know, punting's not a bad thing, but you know, if you you could put a lot of pressure if you're Dallas on this 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 uh Browns offense, if you can master blocking their front and then also, you know, finding a way to, you know, keep that secondary off balance. These guys will cover. You can't make mistakes against that, but trying to keep them off balance, I think, would be a pretty, pretty good way to attack these guys. I'm not gonna ask you to do a prediction. This ain't radio, man. This is YouTube. <laughs> this is internet. I'm not gonna ask you to do a yeah. prediction or whatever. But I, but I do think the Cowboys have have what it takes to to go out and take care of business. But you know, we'll I, have I do, to, yeah, I do too. And you know, initially when you know we did a 105.3 the fan, we called this a loss. But you know, this is when the schedule came comes out, and you're looking at. Okay, what's going on with you know? Here, you know, you you reevaluate, and this is what happens: is banged up offensive line, no Nick Chubb, 
quarterback has a lot of questions, still hasn't, you know, only he's done his practice, hasn't played. Both teams kind of have a lot of questions. And it's, as you mentioned, the team that's able to answer the majority of their questions during this game sure. will probably win this football game. I mean, it, it could go either way. I think Dallas has the better offensive line, mm-hmm. especially with his banged up with, with you know, Wills, Wills. and – and and Conklin and those guys, I mean, it, it's if they're playing backup tackles, yeah. you know, I think Dallas's inside three are probably better than what the Browns are playing with. In Joku is very similar to what you have with Ferguson, uh, as far as the tight ends, the ability to catch the football, the passing game. We also know Amari Cooper can wear your ass out. Mm-hmm. CD Lamb can wear your ass out too on the other end of that. Sure. You know, so the running game, they their best runners out. And now you're trying to piece together a running game. You know, so there, there's a lot of similarities between these two teams. But I think you got the better quarterback. Yeah. And a lot of times, especially a quarterback that plays well against a team that wants to pressure you, like the way that the Browns do. Yeah. Brian, I don't think anybody has a show like ours where we can sit up here and talk about the game and pull some film up and – yeah, and you say yeah, they moved Miles Garrett around. The first yeah. play that we show is Miles Garrett standing up over the center, man. I don't think anybody yeah. does it like that, man. But hey, yeah. uh, that is our preview, man. Appreciate you. Uh, we're about to go watch a game or something and see what NFL football looks like, man. Uh, Brian says that the Cowboys beat the Browns. No, I'm, I'm just playing Brian and Ryan's but <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll be uh we'll be tapped in with y'all, Brian. We doing something tomorrow? We doing something? Yeah, tomorrow? let's let's talk about some. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have some questions for you before this game, so. I'm gonna. It's gonna be get ready for uh, Vach says tomorrow. We'll do that game tomorrow. Vach, who needs to who needs to have a better game? Vach, yeah. ten carries from Rico or five catches from Jalen Tobin. I know your type of games. It'll, it'll get ready. Get ready. You know you know my games. But uh, yeah, thanks to everybody out there. It's been uh, traveling with us. It's only week one, and we're gonna do these a lot more times. But uh, look forward to being with you tomorrow, boss. Sounds fun. Hey, y'all be sure to follow me on Twitter, V-O-C-H-L-O-M-B-A-R-D-I. I'm talking now because the season is here, and Brian going to fuss with every single last one of y'all if you want to fuss with him. So tap in with him, B-R-Y-N-Broadus on Twitter. All right, we'll catch y'all next time. Love y'all two pieces. Crime.